بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Well, uh, you Salaam, Shaykh Yusuf. Shaykh Yusuf. Allah, wa barakatuh. Ma- Sh- Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, it's good to see you. Time has flown by. It's yeah. just like the, uh, yesterday that we were together on this platform, speaking to one another. A sign of the hour. Sign of the hour, Mashallah. But Shaykh, you're always smelling so good. <laughs> you know, it, 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 um, when I sit here, I'm like, um, you know, uh, I have to yes, move closer to Shaykh. <laughs> get get that, 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 the smell of Ubud yes, coming, Mashallah. Uh, I hope there's good companionship, like the Prophet uh, compares good companionship yes. to the seller of musk and you know bad companionship to the blower of bellows. So, inshallah, I hope to be just more uh, than a pretty face with nice smells. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, there was, you know, uh, we, will, we will continue with the conversation and <laughs> all. But, you know, the week has flown by, so Definitely. many things have happened in this past week. You know, uh, let, let's, let's just uh, mention things on top of my head quickly. Uh, you know, we had some scholars that, that's passed away. Yes, sir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them high praise in Jannah. Uh, we've seen some sad events of youth uh, taking their lives. And then, uh, just a little while ago, there was this, the earth was shaken here in Cape Town. Yes, sir. And what does this all mean, you know? Uh, we, we look at, at so many of the uh, scholars and, and, and the hadith that we've spoken about. Uh, and even the time, like you, you've spoken about, the time that's flown by so swiftly. Like uh, a, a week will be like a day, a day will be like an hour, subhanAllah. And we can say all these things, mashallah, it's good to see you, but it's like yesterday that I've seen you, yes, you know, and, and, and so forth. But talk to us about these signs that we are looking at, and how do we respond? Because, you know, just one thing, man, we speak about this, this tremor and people will say, I, did you feed it? And other people say, yes, I felt it, and we're bragging, <laughs> did I feel it, did you feel it? And what does this mean? Is that how we should be supposed to be reacting? A few months ago, we had this, uh, the shakes, and I know in the northern suburbs, northern part of Cape Town was felt a little bit more than the south, uh, and, and yesterday was just the opposite of that. So what does it mean for us? And then we look at, at people who's, who's taken their lives, and we say, you know what? Fina Rijanna. We make that, we make those comments uh, right up front, you know? And we see these scholars that's passed away, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We make dua, Allah grant them a high place in Jannah. But what do we take from all these signs that we have seen? Yes, sir. Now, now amazingly, um, teacher, it's astounding to have like one hadith with a few of the signs and like all the signs just happening one after the other yeah. within a space of one week. And how we approach these signs is also very important. You know, we know the hadith of Jibreel when Jibreel comes into the, you know, um, gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all in white, black hair, you know, just looking very beautiful, no sign of travel on him. And he asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about Islam. He asked about Iman, and then he asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when is the hour? You know. And the Prophet ﷺ responds by saying the, the, the one being questioned, well, you know, um, who is the Prophet yes, ﷺ, yes. doesn't know more than the questioner, who is Jibreel. So if Jibreel doesn't know, and the Prophet ﷺ doesn't know, so Jibreel then says, okay, now what are the signs? And then the Prophet ﷺ gives certain signs in that hadith, and there are many other hadith speaking about the signs of, uh, of the hour. The question is, is everything that's assigned by default something something bad? Because the Prophet speaks about his coming being a sign of the hour, and his com- coming was a blessing. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about wide use of the pen, knowledge being spread, and that was a blessing. Um, tall buildings being built, look at it, it's development. You can, you know, in the in the Makan context, people will say, but no, the old artifacts are being, okay, they, we leave that aside. But in other countries with big buildings are, are built, more people can be accommodated. It's development is something positive. So by, by default, a sign of the hour is not something evil. Yes. One of the signs of the hour, we know that women outnumber men. Are, are we saying women are evil? Definitely, definitely not. So we have these signs of the hour, and one that happened this week was the, the death of three scholars in one day. Probably the, the most um, famous among them was uh, Sheikh Ali al-Halabi, uh, Abu al-Harith, uh, a scholar from Jordan. 
then we had a scholar of Lebanon passing away and a scholar from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And as the Prophet says, Allah takes away knowledge not out of the chest of people, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away knowledge bi qabdil ulama, taking away these scholars. And they cannot be replaced, you know, um, within a day and a night. Because we're talking here about people who have a legacy of studying 30, 40 years, people who've written 150 books and research papers. So we lose that valuable individual. And what happens? Somebody else needs to step in his shoes, who's not as, you know, qualified, if I could say, or has reached that level. Very interesting points, you know. Uh, so even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi spoke about the hour and yin being one of the signs of the hour. Uh, speaking about, you know, advancement of, of uh, society being a sign of the hour. Do we sit and we say, hmm, it's not going to happen in my time. Hmm. Because they've spoken about this 1400 years ago. It's not going to happen in my time. Do we become complacent or do we act upon this? Because it's quite easy to become complacent. It's not going to happen in my time. But my thought as a layman, Sheikh, tells me I'm going to have my own hour. Mm. My own hour is way, might be way before the hour of Qiyamah. And, and now, what if I prepared for it? Mm. Isn't that the kind of mindset we're supposed to be having? You know, the amazing thing about the scholars, you know, that came before us, and we talk about scholars centuries ago, yes. they would look at these signs and think, no, it's in our time, you yeah. know. When they saw the sign, for example, the Prophet speaks about women being uh, dressed but yet naked. Now you look back a hundred years and, and you look at the, the most promiscuous woman that you could find walking around, she was much more covered than anyone in our time. So you go hundred years further back and you'll just find people who are more covered because we came out of this primitive age where you know, certain countries were walking naked and then when uh, you know, other countries um, conquered, they, they brought clothing. Yeah. So it was like this develop into, the development into clothing and, you know, um, pump wear and, and, and all these gold and silks and silvers and now the clothing is getting all uh, less and less and less. So scholars would look at that and say now it's in, it's in our time. So as a conscious Muslim, we don't know what when that time is. All we can do is look at these signs as indicators of it's almost there because when we're going on in December and most of us can't travel international we're gonna go on the garden route and we hit the in the end two right yes, yes, the end yes. <laughs> yeah we hit the end two <laughs> and we see the board says George 300 kilometers we haven't reached George yet it's only an indicator it's but if it's a sign but every sign the next sign will be 200 the next sign will be 150 kilometers. The next sign will be 100 kilometers. So the signs come one after the other. And as they come closer and follow each other, we need to take stock and prepare. Absolutely, take stock. So, so we go on this journey that you, Marshall, that you just made a very good analogy there. Uh, I don't know, are you going on? Inshallah. Right? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm jumping into the back <laughs> and I'm going joining you. But the thing is that these signs are coming. We prepared ourselves, we packed our bags. Uh, we made sure we've covered sunblock and up to the last bit of detail is there. And we made sure that uh, we are prepared for this journey. MashaAllah. And, and as the sign comes, we get anxious and we get excited. Mm. MashaAllah. We've got 300 kilometers to go, like you said. We've got 100 kilometers. And as we get closer, we get more and more excited. Mm. Such must, must we be in meeting our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, excited to meet Him, looking forward to meeting Him, subhanAllah. Yeah, no, you know, when, when somebody dies, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, verily, we come from Allah, and to Allah is our return. And then, year after year, right, we um, have a, a day that we born on, and then, you know, we either celebrate it, or we won't go into the, legality of celebrating birthdays or not but at least you should think that it's 365 days closer to the end the end can be tomorrow yes we know that i mean one year we, when, when we spoke last week we said that um, the prophet mentions that the lifespan of my ummah is between 60 and 70. so when we give a big 21st party in actual fact we should be thinking 
That's one third of my life gone. gone. Yeah. The next milestone is 40, right? When you reach 40, oh, two thirds of my life gone. Okay, so now the next big party is 50, but 60 is also a milestone. I <laughs> mean, you know, basically, it's, it's yeah. over, it's game over, you know, like when the petrol tank goes on to that empty, it's in the red, we start to worry. But at 60, you know, they say no, life starts at, uh, at 60. But they say E on the petrol gauge, it's E, e is for enough. <laughs> You've had enough, <laughs> so it's time, time to move on. You know, uh, I think just to those, those following us, I want to say to you for your feedback, for your questions, for your comments and following us. I think keep on doing that. You know, we've got a, a lovely, some few beautiful surprises and prizes up for grabs. Uh, so make that, speak to your friends, uh, let them know, follow us, like us, comment, you know, critique, doesn't matter. We'll take it because we are in tripping. Are you tripping? Not at all, Chef. Right. So, <laughs> so even on this very hot topic, we're not getting hot under the collar, we've got collars on, but it's a very hot topic, it's a very sensitive topic, people don't want to talk about it because it sounds like very morbid. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hear about this. We don't want to hear about Qiyama. We don't want to hear about the signs of Qiyama. Mm. Uh, but now let, let's talk about these young people mm. that have decided that they've had enough of living. They are in their teens. And you know, you speak about these two youngsters that, uh, that uh, took their lives over the weekend. And just a week or two ago, somebody at one of these uh, you know, major universities also decided that he has he had enough and he's taken his life. So, so I think what we just need to talk about what inspires him to, to go this route? What drives him to, to, to be doing these sort of things, you know? With, we say that the world is the oyster, oyster and the life ahead of them is so much and they are the leaders of tomorrow, yet they decide that uh, they are calling it a day here on this Yeah, no, it's a really uh, a sad uh, time and condolences to the families yes. uh, for their loss. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith that's being spread um, and an authentic hadith for a change <laughs> that's being spread now related to the um, earthquakes and the scholars that passed away it also mentions murder yes. right. and although suicide is the person taking his own life it's murder is murdering him himself and the Prophet mentions one of the one of the signs of the hour is al haruj so the companions ask what's al haruj Prophet says al qatl al qatl widespread murder because there's no value attached to life you know you can get somebody murdered for 1500 and you say go and yeah go and murder that person and then there's the value of our our own lives and basically <coughs> it's a lack of the, per the person feels that he doesn't have a purpose in uh, in life and uh, as a community it's really sad that perhaps you know that person gave you some you know um, some signs that he's going he or she might be going uh, that route and you know we find sometimes we bully people whether it is body shaming whether it is cyber bullying yes you know in, in my time at school they would just you know bully you straight on yeah. you know face to face but now it's cyber bullying yes so you have thousands of friends watching how you know back and forth how things are going and a 16 year old in, in grade 11 we can now say but how can you know she it was only the start of a life mm -hmm. that boyfriend that broke up with her whatever we're not speaking about the specific case but we find that the boyfriend breaks up with a girlfriend she feels it's the end of her life and she takes her life right? because she, she doesn't have purpose of, of life anymore and then we turn around also and, and say you know this person is in hellfire forever we have this generic response to uh, to suicide and again like we spoke last week about gender-based violence happening in the the life of Rasulullah and the prophet's response to that we find that suicides also happened in the time of the Prophet uh, though the authentic um, reports from the Prophet um, obviously suicide is something ugly, detested, discouraged and the Prophet would say you know, the, you know, the one who takes his own life he will replay that murdering himself till the, the end of till, till the day of Qiyamah he will be murdering himself all the time so obviously this is 
something not encouraged. But is that person in hellfire forever? If, if a Muslim takes his life, is he a kafir? Because these are words that we quickly, you know, um, pass around. Kafir, munafiq, fasiq. So yes. how do we approach? If, if, if one of our family members takes his life, do we pray salah on him? Do we go to, to the janazah? And yes, suicide happened in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, um, you know, we are taught by our pious predecessors, if you want to emulate or imitate someone, imitate someone who has died, as Abdullah ibn Masood says. If you want to follow somebody, follow those who have passed on. Because the living is not free of trials and tribulations. So we find during one battle, the Sahabas looking at this brave individual, uh, during battle and you know they're very impressed with this individual and the Prophet Sallallahu has a different um, opinion of this person obviously because of Wahi Prophet Sallallahu because they say he's, he's brave and he's this and he's that the Prophet Sallallahu says no it's not like that you know Prophet Sallallahu actually sees this individual in Alpha what happened he got hurt during a battle put the sword down in the ground and because of the pain was so immense, like we have uh, euthanasia, yes, mercy yes. killings, just took his life because he couldn't handle the pain anymore. So this person was in hellfire after the Sahaba, the best generation, thought this was, you know, a, a good or individual or like an example to look up to. And then we find another uh, case of, of, uh, of suicide amongst the companions of the Prophet So we have um, the Sahabi um, coming from Yemen to settle in uh, Medina from the tribe of Dos. Dos was the tribe of Abu Rayla. So with the Sahabi comes another person who's not mentioned uh, in, the, in the narration. When they get to Medina, the weather wasn't up to his liking, the environment wasn't uh, you know, conducive to him and he got sick and, and he lost hope. And, then he took one of his uh, arrow heads and cut his fingers off, the tips of his fingers, he cut it off till he bled to death and he died. And so his friend that he traveled with to Medina, to file uh, Ibn Amr, he sees this man in a, in a dream yes. and he's in paradise, yes. but his hands are, are covered. All right? So we ask his friend in the dream, you know, what happened? This hadith is Sahih Muslim, authentic hadith. So he says, what happened to you? He says, look, I'm, I'm in Jannah because of the hijrah I made to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, now what happened to your hands? So he says, no, I was told that we won't fix that which you have destroyed. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgives this man, but his hands in the dream is covered. Then Tufayl ibn Amr, he goes to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he narrates this to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ says, May Allah forgive his hands. And the scholars say that most probably his hands are intact due to the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Again, the Prophet never had generic approaches. The one died in jihad, he took his life in jihad. The other one, he takes his life also basically by cutting off his fingers and bleeding out. Yet the Prophet ﷺ makes dua for, his individual, for this individual. Sheikh, we, we're going to have to wrap up the, this particular segment and I know this is part one. We say to those following us, this is part one of this particular edition. And you can continue following us uh, next week uh, as we do part two. Because inshallah. I, I, inshallah, because it's a very important topic of discussion that we're on. And we've got a few more things that we need to talk about still. And perhaps that we haven't spoken about how to deal with the tremors and how we respond to that. Is it the bragging rights? Do we have bragging rights to say I survived this? Like I survived COVID-19? Uh, I don't know. Do we have bragging rights around, uh, you know, the, these... Let's see next time, inshallah. inshallah. But Jalal Allah Khayna, Sheikh. What's this? Uh, it's a book. Uh, a book? Yeah. It says, enjoy your life. Sheikh, Are oh, we giving this away? Or did you read Yeah, definitely. Book? No, this book um, was uh, really a very good read for me. Um, it actually, it's, it's actually a book that um, st steered me into reading other self-help books and this book is written by uh, Dr. Muhammad Arifi it's basically about interpersonal skills that we learn from the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
So um, this is up for, for grabs. We did speak of another yeah. prize, which is still up for, for grabs, inshallah. But this one we'll give away uh, quicker, inshallah. Enjoy your life by uh, Sheikh Muhammad Arifi. All you need to do is go onto our Instagram page and tag as many friends and uh, followers you have on our Instagram. And page. then you're going to enjoy your life. Enjoy. Tag all those people. You're going to enjoy your life after you get this book. And then they're going to want to get this book. So you're going to be c continue following us, inshallah. Sheikh, jazakallah yeah, khairan once again. Barakallah. Barakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.